Recording in progress. Fantastic. All right, let's uh, call to order the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission at 2.30 October 25th, 2024. And um, uh, Ms. Chair, or excuse me, would you, Ms. Clerk, would you please yes. take the roll? Sorry. Absolutely. So, members, uh, Shalom Sherla. I'm here. Thank yes. you. <laughs> McCarthy Olmstead. Present. Martian. Present. Sloan. Here. Riley. Here. Brown. Here. Middleton. Gatewood or Pulapati. Pepino. Here. Serna or Nava. Spees. Present. Tau or Hackett Little. Hackett Little is here. Present. Thank you. And Descala. And you do have your quorum. Thank you very much. And uh, next, I'd like to ask Mr. Ayala in the audience if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. And Madam Clerk, would you please read the Metro Replay statement and meeting announcement, please? Absolutely. So this meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.satcounty.gov and will replay Tuesday, October 29th at 9 a.m. on Metro Cable Channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com backslash Metro Cable 14. And this commission fosters public engagement during the meeting and encourages pu public participation, civility, and use of courteous language. Uh, to make a comment in person, please fill out a speaker request form and hand it to clerk staff. The chairperson will open public comments for each agenda or off agenda item and direct the clerk to call the name of each speaker. When the clerk calls your name, please come to the podium and make your comment. You can uh, may also feel free to send written comments by um, email to board clerk at sacccounty.gov, and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And you can also send them uh, via United States Postal Service to 700 H Street, Suite 2450, Sacramento, California 95814. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And um, Madam Clerk, I think we're going to go to. Um, public comments first, and then we'll go into closed session. Is that right? Do we have any speakers signed up to uh, for uh, comments related uh, to matters not on the posted agenda? No, sir. We don't have any. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So we are now going to uh, go to closed session. Correct? Correct. Did I get it right? I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, my apologies. And, and for the record, Member Pulapati is has arrived. Hello. Right on time. Okay, so now we're going to go to closed session. Did you have anything you needed to brief us on before? Okay, so we will be uh, off for just a few minutes here, hopefully, and we'll be back soon. So, oh, you're recording, recording in progress. Okay, we are back from closed session, and do we report out or do we just simply? Okay, would you please give the report out, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I'm excited to announce that in closed session, the vo board voted unanimously to appoint Sean Ayala as its new executive director, pending approval of his employment agreement as part of item four on the agenda this afternoon, um, and copies of the staff report and supporting materials for agenda item number four are now available. Thank you. Okay, thank you much. Give me a second to find myself back on the, we are moving to consent matters next, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, are there any public comments related to consent? No public comments. All right. Do we have any? Uh, oh, before I go further, everybody do me a favor. If you do have a request to speak, please use the request to speak button so that I can keep track of, of folks. But at this point in time, do you have any comments on consent calendar? If there are no comments on consent calendar, I'll call for a motion. So moved. We have a motion. Brown. Second. Second, YK? Yep. All right. Um, and then, uh, oh, we got to vote. There we go. There we go. Please vote. And no surprise, I Unanimous believe the motion vote. passes. Let's see. All right. And so we next move to discussion matters. Um, Madam Clerk, please 
Call the next item. So your item number three this afternoon is to adopt a resolution approving the fiscal year 2025 through 26 cable casting fee schedule. Okay. Mr. Um, Davison, I believe that's you. Yeah, good afternoon, um, Chair Spies and members of the board. And for this item, um, we have um, Kristen Riggs, our production director, who will be doing a PowerPoint presentation. Fantastic. There you go, Ms. Riggs. Hello. Good afternoon, Chair Spies and Commissioners. I am back again here in response to direction from the board to propose Metro Cable Channel 14, uh, what we should charge for our services, and I do have a PowerPoint for this item. Um, just as a reminder, we're not going to be charging member agencies, the seven member agencies, the Board of Supervisors in the cities, but the non-member agencies. And we are covering 22 agencies at this point. We just added Folsom Cordova Unified School District this October as a, as a new client. All righty. <laughs> so back in March, uh, to recap, I presented four options to you. Uh, option one was to charge all the member agencies the full cost of broadcasting services. Option two was to charge a subsidized cost. Option three was to charge the four uh, agencies that we currently are covering an increased flat fee. And then option four was to not make any change at all. After considering the four options, the board had the following requests of me uh, to pull the member agencies to see what they're comfortable with and to give them a heads up on a possible fee increase or change in the future, uh, to conduct research for cost recovery. And amongst the directors, there was a mix of opinions on what amount of cost recovery that would look like and whether we should subsidize at all. And the board leaned toward having each non-member agency pay. And I was asked to bring this cable casting fee schedule to the board for approval. I provided a quick update at the last meeting, uh, the June meeting, and the response from the agencies that were polled, um, from the non-member agencies, four of them were neutral on the fees, five preferred subsidized, three preferred being charged the actual cost, four felt that all the non-member agencies should pay, and one agency would cease being broadcast, and that was CCP, if they're charged anything. The member uh, agencies out of those uh, that responded for them didn't have any strong preference on the fees. Two of them felt that the actual cost made sense charging that, and one of them had a suggestion for how to do simplify the billing with the average charge that was approximately full cost recovery. And based upon the feedback, I'm going to propose some fees uh, considering the following points. Fair and consistent fees, a simple transparent billing, base fee is set at a one hour minimum, additional fees will apply per additional 30 minute increment, estimated staff time spent on production and programming is considered, the estimated cost for live captioning, live closed captioning, and there will be annual cost escalation to ensure that the fees continue to recover costs. And I'm going to expand on the cost escalation later in the presentation. Um, and just for bullet point uh, four, the, the caption that we have now, the live captioning is through Aberdeen. And to schedule it, we have to schedule it ahead of time in a one hour minimum. So that's always a cost that we'll have for the meetings that we're contracted with Aberdeen for. And they charge by 30 minute increments after that. So that's part of the billing. In the next two slides, I will outline each of the cost categories. 
The first one, control room meetings with live captioners. The second one is control room meetings with AI or auto captioning after the fact. Third will be a flight pack. And then the fourth is file delivery. The two that you see here, um, the first one is the rates for meetings that are recorded at a control room using live captioners. So our proposed fee is $350 for the first hour. Each additional half hour, $75. And after five minutes after the start of each additional hour, that triggers the next cost level for half hour. Rates for meetings recorded in control rooms using AI or auto captioning, the minimum charge is $250. That's for one hour. And $37.50 for each half hour after the first hour. And again, the trigger is five minutes past the start of each additional hour. You're going to get that additional half hour charge. And the AI captioning, again, is only for places that do not have the proper equipment where we're able to do live captioning or an agency that um, we, is not in our Aberdeen contract for live captioning. And here we have the flight pack. These types of meetings uh, are done with portable AV equipment that we take to locations that do not have control rooms. They're a little bit more expensive, but we can provide a high quality AV recording using our flight pack. So the cost with live captioning would be 1,425 for the first hour and $123 per hour thereafter. And if AI captioning is used after the fact, where we record it on site and caption it after the fact, it would be $1,340 for the first hour, $80 per additional half hour. For delivered files, these are for agencies who record their own meeting. They use their staff to record the meeting, and they send us a file. $80 includes one hour of AI captioning and 1.5 hours of staff time. And originally I thought it would take about an hour of staff time, but after discussing it with our staff, it really takes more time. So I had to consider that 1.5 hours of staff time. Um, so the delivered files, $80, additional half hour, $5.50. And the additional note here, the closed sessions and late start times and other recesses may affect the meeting duration, and the charges would also take that into consideration. Um, the production director, myself, would determine the fee to charge or the executive director if it really had to escalate if there was some ambiguity in, in the meeting duration. And the cost escalation. The executive director, Bob Davison, Jillian and I had some discussions on this and various ways to escalate cost. And the one that made the most sense to us is based on the percentage of change annually in the consumer price index. So the resolution authorizes the executive director to adjust cable casting fees each July. And based on applying the year-to-year -year change in the consumer price index, um, which factors 12 months of percent change, and we would be using the most recent March 31st percentage for that. And the initial cost escalation would be effective July 1st, 2026, if there is a cost escalation. 2025, again, is when the fees I'm proposing would actually go into effect. So this is the year after we would look at cost escalation. And the fees would be consistent with other city and county fees. And we would keep it in line with any cost recovery if there's any change in our captioning price or our um, salary. So right here is a very simple glance at the fees. It's an abbreviated fee schedule with the cost of the first hour and additional half hours. The agenda packet shows uh, an expanded version of that in attachment one. The 
The fiscal impact, there is no change to this current budget year. The fee schedule will be implemented in fiscal year 25-26, July 1st, 2025. The estimated impact to the general fund in 25-26 is around $45,000 of additional revenue. And this is based on proposed fees and the calendar year 2023 statistics. And it does not factor flight pack usage. It's hard to guess how often that would be used and paid for. So my recommendation, our recommendation is to adopt a resolution approving the fiscal year 25-26 cable casting fee schedule. And the reasoning is it captures the estimated cost of covering non-member agency meetings. The agencies are charged fairly. The rates are easy to understand and billing is streamlined and easy to implement. And I'm happy to address any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you, Ms. Riggs. Go ahead and stay right there because first I'm gonna ask for public comment. I don't think anybody's signed up. And there's no public comments. No public comments. Uh -huh. So at this point in time, I have a couple of uh, uh, directors who've uh, signed up to speak and um, you are first. Thank you Director so much, Brown. Chair. Uh, and uh, so first of all, Ms. Riggs, thank you so much for, for the work that y'all have put into this. This has clearly been you know, exceptionally well researched and it's, it's an, a, a very strong recommendation uh, and one that I'll be happy to support. Um, and so you know, I was looking at my, my biggest concern here is one of our smallest non-members, which is of course the, the capital corrections uh, folks. And you know, one of probably, Ultimately, the core mission of this commission and agency is to ensure wide public access to these meetings that may not otherwise have that kind of access, which includes, of course, streaming online and on, on um, Channel 14. Uh, and I'm a little concerned about the, the singular agency office. I'm not sure what it is fully, I'm gonna be honest with you. Whatever that uh, agency is, um, about them not necessarily having publicly accessible, you know, meeting streams uh, any longer, and so um, I wanted to dive a little bit into your conversation with with this um, organization. Um, you know, what was their perspective on it? And I mean, you can. I'm not sure if you can uh, answer this or not, but is it that they can't pay or that they won't pay? They didn't provide me with any additional no. information other than if they were charged anything, they did not want to be broadcast. Okay, um, so that's disappointing and not as informative as I would hope, but uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I, I, and I would like to, like to add on, on that question, um, and especially with your new executive director, actually understands that corrections, um, uh, the, 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 their meetings very well. I think there's still opportunity for our staff to meet with their staff, could, because we all agree with the transparency that having these meetings um, you know, recorded by Metro Cable, being on the cable channels, being uh, streamed and being on YouTube and such is uh, good public transparency. So just because their initial input is that, oh, no, thanks, but no thanks, um, we think that there's still um, opportunity to have discussions with them. And it, uh, maybe I'll be hopeful that um, they will continue to be on the Metro Cable 14. Excellent, uh, thank you, and that's really reassuring to hear. Um, and my, my follow-up is that, um, however that conversation may net out, if they end up being in a situation where it is a can't pay situation, um, I would love for us to see what we can do to explore ways to you know, selectively subsidize this stream or this access for our agencies and uh, partners who are have an exceedingly low budget, as I might imagine that this one would. Uh, and so that is, of course, contingent on your conversations with them and our new executive director working with them. So I'll really look forward to, to hearing the report back. And uh, as uh, one of the folks on this uh, commission who probably had the most feelings about this earlier in the year, uh, I'm really thrilled to see this come back and looking forward to supporting it. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Director Brown. We will go now to Director Sloan. I just had a question on your fee schedule. Uh, you were so specific with the $5.50 per extra half hour. I was wondering if you could uh, explain how you came to that number. Sure. Uh, the AI captioning is something we're exploring now. We haven't done it prior to a few months past, but we wanted to be captioning everything that we broadcast as far as meetings go. So we were not 
captioning Sac City Schools and Sacramento Metro Fire. They did not have captioning equipment on site to do that. So we wanted a way to do that and we have a, currently we're exploring something that'll play out on our, our server. Our server captions it, Cablecast, and that's the pricing. You, you can buy it in batches. There are many different methods to do AI or auto captioning. It, it's just a lot of different workflows, different software. There are many different ways to do it, but the cost is $11 an hour, 550 for a half an hour. Thank you very much. Sure. Right. Thank you, Director Sloan. Director Pulapati. Um, my question is on the live captioning versus AI captioning. Is it one or the other? Yes. Um, coming from a tech industry, the AI is really, really inexpensive these days, but these seem pretty close to each other. Is that the most competitive pricing that you have on these? As far as live captioning or AI captioning. AI captioning, are you saying there's less expensive than $11 an hour captioning or? Most of us pretty much use it for free. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm just wondering. It's probably workflow is, is the reasoning and we haven't tested every type of AI captioning. We've, we've tested some of the heavy hitters. We have so many locations and it, you know logistics, equipment, how to get that uh, things captioned. I know Zoom, you can do captioning, but our recording is pre-Zoom, separate from Zoom. It's just technology. There's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but what goes with our, our stream, you know, our workflow? Right. And what, so, play, what plays out on our channel? What files are compatible? And getting captioning happening on our recording and the live streams at all the different locations that have live streamed meetings. So it, it's technology and, and workflow. It boils down to that for, for auto captioning. And we haven't auto captioned out, out in the other than the files that we intake here. We have an agreement with, with Aberdeen with the set list of agencies. And if we change one of those agencies, we redefine the agreement with them for the live so captioning. So you, you're working with one agency, and this one agency is giving you this one pricing. So it, we don't have competitive pricing. We have pricing from this one agency. For the auto captioning is what you're asking about? For the about? AI captioning. For the AI captioning. So just speak to why we're using the one agency versus... I, no, I'm just asking. I don't, I don't, I'm not asking why. The question is, it, the, the pricing is from one agency. It's not a competitive, like, this is the best pricing we got. No, no, there's... there's probably better pricing or if I bought a bigger amount of uh, minutes, then you're going to get a better price the more that you purchase. So it, it depends on how we're, it just depends on how we're doing it. There's different ways to auto caption and we've chosen to test the one that uses our video server. It, it plays out on our server and captions a file at the same time. So it doesn't take extra time for us, the cable casting. That's just the one we've chosen. Okay, that's okay. Thank and we've you. looked at other, there are other ways to so do that. So that answers for sure. my question. So you have gone, you have competitive pricing, not just the one pricing. That's, that's my, I'm you not. Have, I, I think what she's going towards is, have, are, is that the only option that you've looked at, or were there more options that you looked at? Is that yes, the easy way to put yes. it? There are right. other options. The pricing is, very competitive, though. The, the $11 an hour is very good. Okay. Thank you. But there are plenty of other ones to explore, and we're just testing it at this point to see how accurate it is, how much control we have over correcting things that we know are always captioned strangely because it, AI wants to fill in words where it doesn't necessarily make sense to. So it, we're just exploring right now. Sure. And, and this is, the, so far, this is the system that works best with w the equipment that we have. So the price of $11 an hour, you know, versus you know, that being a competitive price, the, there's savings in having AI captioning that works well with the equipment we have. So we're going to have less work of staff time dealing with programs maybe that don't do it quite as efficiently. So it wasn't just the price of the captioning, though it's it's 
pretty low. It, it was, you know, how well it works with the system. And I think our technical staff, our production staff, did um, w w look at different captioning and I think have chosen the ones that they feel. I, I think that answers my question. Now, okay. You did look at different and then you chose yeah. this one. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, her question was far more high level than I think you wanted <laughs> to go. Um, but yeah, I think the other part is that that there's another opportunity next year to update the fee schedule, and as AI opportunities continue to increase, there will certainly be another opportunity to decrease fees as well if there's an opportunity. So, um, was was that all you had? Okay. So, thank you, Director Pulapati. We will now go with Director Chalantrilla. Sir? Yes, sir. Um, I just want to, you know, uh, request again, uh, it's uh, Ryan's comments about that one agency or non-member agencies. Uh, I mean, you have seen, you know, we were driving to bring more to our metro channel, like one-stop shop for Sacramento region, right? We don't want to lose one. Anything we can do, or uh, 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 Bob, or Sean, down the road, mm -hmm. at your level, giving a call to their executive board, and sharing the value we are providing to the public, and the amount of money, it's almost, you know, tiny. Right, and Chair is also can definitely you know chime in and giving a call. We want to show the value to the public. That's important. Worst case, we can figure out some subsidies down the road. But bringing more agencies to this cable is our goal. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you, Director Chalantrilla. Um, thank you, Miss Riggs. I appreciate it. I know at, at last year we, when we started talking about this, it was a little muddy on, on where we wanted to go. And so thank you very much for coming up with a solution that I think is, is works well for everyone. So thank you very much, Miss Riggs. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay. So if there are no other questions or comments, I'm happy to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Did you get that, Miss Fraser? Member Brown, that's right. Okay, so we will now vote. Unanimous vote. And with no surprise, we have a unanimous, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, so Madam Clerk, our next item, please. Uh, so your item number four is the approval of executive director employment agreement and adopt a resolution to approve temporary executive assistant position and updated public salary schedule. All righty, Mr. Davison. Yes, um, or is Commission it Council Mr. Josh Nelson, Nelson will uh, present this item. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this item, uh, there are two parts of it. Uh, the first, as we reported out of closed session, um, this board um, appointed uh, Sean Ayala as its new executive director. So the first part of this item would to approve his employment agreement, um, and the specifics of that are included in the um, attachment, which is available for public review. Uh, the second piece of, of this item. Um, would be to add a position um, to the commission of executive assistant. Um, staff's uh, thought is that this position would be filled by uh, Mr. Davison, the current interim executive director, to allow um, some onboarding and as a resource for Mr. Ayala as he comes up to speed on cable commission um, uh, matters. And then uh, related to that, uh, this item would amend the publicly available salary schedule to add both a salary range for the executive director and for the executive assi assistant um, positions. That salary schedule is a requirement of uh, CalPERS. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me first uh, find out if we have any public comment. And we do not have any public comments. All right, we have no public comment. Are there any questions, comments, concerns, observations? Absent that, um, I got a I got a comment to make because I think this this solidifies um, a, a, a very uh, important for us uh, uh, appointment, and um, this is the last formal procedure I think we need to do relative to that, and so. Um, and that is um, the selection of Mr. Ayala, and of course all of the other. Um, um, administration that follows, right? So I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank the ad hoc team of which uh, I was able to participate in. So uh, Director Sloan and Director Chalanchurla, uh, thank you very much for your, for your dedication to this. Um, and most importantly, uh, I want to thank staff who have done a fantastic job, who have worked very hard to keep this on track. It's not easy to do when you have a board that meets four to five times a year. 
Um, and I know uh, that it hasn't been particularly easy, uh, but I know that we have found um, a, definitely a fantastic solution, um, and that, of course, is Mr. Ayala. And so um, I just want to make sure that I, I thank the staff very much um, for, for all of the work that you've done with this. I think we've got some, uh, we've got a great future ahead of us. So, all right. So with that, um, can I get a motion? All right, Director Sloan. I'll Good, second. Yeah. I'm sorry? I'll right. second. All okay. Right. Yeah. I, I want to give opportunity oh. a second to others, otherwise oh. it's going to be a subcommittee. <laughs> oh, oh, that's true. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> <It> should be. <laughs> okay, so we have, a, we have a motion and a second. Perfect. All those in favor, please say aye. Or aye. please vote. Aye. Yeah, you can say aye, too. Aye. Sure. All right, please vote. Unanimous vote. Unanimous vote. And for those of you who have been listening to me talk about it for a while, spike that football. We did a great job. Thank you very much. All righty. Oh, yeah, we want to invite that guy up. Sure. Mr. Ayala, would you please uh, take the, the podium here? And if you have some comments or... Uh, thank you for everyone's support. I know that uh, it took a couple of interviews to get to this point and some background checks. But uh, I appreciate the commission's support. And the second interview, I thought, was the one that was most productive for both of us and to help me understand better what you were looking for in executive leadership. And I very much um, will be able to deliver that for you. Thank you, sir. Yes, hers and madam's, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Perfect. OK. Thank you very much, Mr. Ayala. OK, so I think we are now moving on to the next item. We are. So your item number five this afternoon is to receive and file reports of channel licensees and approve special items of business. OK, and so Access Sacramento. Actually, I'm just sure speaking before getting into the normal, um, bringing the um, different channel licensees up, I do have, it's not typical that we have a action item during this part of the, the board meeting. So I just want to call to your attention that uh, we are recommending the adoption of a resolution procla uh, proclamation honoring uh, Ray um, Tatter for his long-running dependable volunteer work with Access Sacramento. And um, actually, this is supposed to be a surprise, so I don't know if he's, <laughs> he's watching. <laughs> surprise. But with that, um, next, uh, on, on Saturday, um, November 16th, he's going to be honored at an event, and then he'll be presented with the... Uh, the the resolution uh, that y your board, uh, I believe, will be approving today. <laughs> I would expect that's probably uh -huh. likely. So, so with that, um, uh, it, like I said, it's supposed to be a surprise, but he may or may not be watching. <laughs> I'm not going to read the entire resolution, but I am going to point out, uh, you know, why we're taking this action, which is not usual um, at, at our meetings. Um, Ray Tatter, um, he's uh, very committed to California arts. By cre he's created a small business theater in Sacramento. I think many of you probably know this already. Um, it's called the California Stage Theater, and it's a nonprofit theater company dedicated to encouraging arts um, created by California artists. And uh, the link to our commission in Access Sacramento is that um, uh, Raymond um, uh, Tatter is a dependable volunteer. And we don't talk about the volunteers all the time here, but the volunteers are a significant part of what happens with the ch channel licensees. Um, his wit spirit um, uh, uh, have been on display as the host of the show Live Wire, which has been on for 33 years um, on Access Sacramento. And I, I, I believe, though Donna can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that there, with Ray's retirement from volunteering and from his active work, they will be retiring that show. That has been a uh, a mainstay on um, Access Sacramento for um, that long. Maybe the longest running show, Donna? Yes, the longest running uh, show on Access Sacramento. So uh, with that, I recommend, you know, before getting to the, the remainder of the channel licensee item, is that you adopt the resolution uh, proclaiming Ray Tatter and honoring him, for Ray uh, Tatter, for his long-running, dependable volunteer work with Access Sacramento. Fantastic. Okay. I, do we have to get public comment on that? We do. We, we, by it is an item on the agenda, and we do need to take public comments, although there are none. So okay. This there afternoon. are no public yeah. comments. Yes. Yeah. And so I see no requests uh, to speak, and so with that, I would be happy to entertain a motion. <laughs> Second. 
Motion and a second. All right, and if you would please vote. Unanimous vote. Okay, and it is adopted. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, are you presenting it on? Uh, um, or is, Donna, well, Donna, I'm, okay. I'm going to hand this over We're to Donna, to, and perfect. she will be presenting it to Ray at the function next month. Perfect, wow. and that's perfect timing because <laughs> I believe you have a report. How are you today? I'm okay. Um, I'm Donna Duro, the executive director at Access Sacramento, the Sac County Community Media Center. We educate the community on how to use media and hopefully that makes them more employable. And also they can lift their voices. Um, we consider this a great kindness. Thank you so much for this proclamation. Ray Tatter has been just a uh, stalwart, witty, clever host. He has hosted over 1,500 shows weekly. He's, he's so dedicated. And um, that's extraordinary, 32 years of volunteerism. We decided that we were going to retire Livewire because we want a flagship show that even brings more value to the community. So we're going to start a new show called County Edition, and you'll learn about that soon enough. Um, but Livewire has always been an, not only a show, a weekly show that um, highlights government agency initiatives, highlights nonprofit work, highlights the arts, what's going on in the arts, even if they're for-profit arts organizations. So that's been the life of Livewire. Um, so the, we, we're going to have a void because of we're going to stop the show, and we're hoping the members pick up and create shows to interview nonprofits. Some of them are doing it already. Um, Livewire has been an educate has an educational element to it, where anyone who's taken the um, television studio production class would then volunteer for the show and basically um, learn how to actually function in a show crew. So it's not just we don't just create a flagship show; we create a flagship show that actually has a lot of ed educational elements to it. So. We're going we're gonna to have a new show that's going to incorporate not only the TV studio production uh, students, but also the field production students and the edit students. So we're trying to just be more inclusive. But what we'd like to do is invite you. We're going to have a rap party, as they say in the film industry. It's a rap. Mm -hmm. So Livewire, very special. Um, the uh, We have a um, another company that... Uh, we collaborate with. It's called Futures Explored. It's a nonprofit that educates young handicapped um, individuals on how to be filmmakers. And so they're in the center of town on R Street. They have an extraordinary studio that they recently renovated, and we're having our party there. So we invite you all. Uh, tickets are available on accesssacramento.org. It's on November. 18th. Wait, let me, let me, I think it's the 16th. It's Saturday. November 16th at 6 p.m. We're calling it Hooray Soiree. We'd love for you to come. It's an interactive party. So the first hour you get to um, play. We have stop motion stations so you can learn how to do stop motion. We have a radio drama station so you can participate in being the actor in a radio drama. We have a, a professional photographer and Ray has opened his his costume box so you can get dress up and have uh, pr professional pictures taken. And if you're feeling not that ambitious and you just want to observe, we have a few circus performers a tarot reader, and yes, even a mermaid. So um, it's just an oddball. A lot of people wanted to contribute to the to the wrap of Live Wire, and of course, a delicious meal. So, um, and of course, we'll honor Ray. We're going to give him this proclamation and a Power of Voice award, which is Access Sacramento's. Uh, occasionally we find somebody in the community who uses their voice to lift the community, and he's been doing that for 32 years. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, do we have any questions? Nothing? It'll, it'll be the best party you've ever been to. So. Perfect. 
Just Everybody thought. likes a party. This is good. November 16th, <laughs> 6 p.m. All right, tickets, Access Sacramento. Yeah. The Thank Hooray you. Soiree. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here today. And please give our best. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speeds. Thanks. Okay. And next in the line is Capital Public Radio, but I see KVIE. Mr. Lowe is in the room. Well, like Mr. Davison, I really hope Ray wasn't watching because there was a lot just said about him, and that's going to be spoiled. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I learned a lot about him, and I don't know him. There's Good afternoon. Mermaid. I'm David Lowe. I'm the president and general manager with KVIE. Uh, we just produced a Sacramento mayoral debate. It aired on Wednesday evening, and it is available for free on-demand streaming. In addition, prior to that, we produced two separate Studio Sacramento episodes that featured individual conversations with both candidates. On Monday, we aired a new Rob on the Road, and it celebrates two iconic locations in Sacramento. He went up on the Tower Bridge to a place where none of us should go, at least because it went up while he was on it. Mm -hmm. And then he also went to the Sacramento Locomotive Works and was able to go through some areas that are um, not for the public to see, but he saw some really cool stuff, which means if you watch, you'll see some really cool stuff too. Uh, all those stories are available, of course, for free on-demand streaming through our free PBS app. Uh, we're also in production on a number of stories in Sacramento County, including an interview with outgoing Crocker Art Museum Executive Director Lyle Jones, a look at the Philharmonic, which is a local band that won the Tiny Desk concert uh, for NPR, and then a look at some of the diverse owned businesses in our Yes, We're Open series. Thank you, as always, for your support. Fantastic. Do we have any questions or comments? All right. I believe Donna wants to show a video, an Access Sacramento video oh. after okay. this. Okay, not a problem, <laughs> yeah. sounds good. Uh, I do have a question though. Um, the art auction, sir, how did that go? It went very well. It was one of our top five grossing, and I think we reached more people in terms of not only who, was able, who were able to see it digitally and on television, but also we opened up our community room free for the public for everyone to come in and see 250 local pieces of art. Awesome. So, Fantastic. Glad to hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here today. Okay, and so I uh, guess I skipped the video. N no, I, I, I think it, it's, it's fine, um, but uh, Donna did let us know that she has a video she would like to show, so it would be appropriate to show that well, now. Well, let's, let's do it. A video. And he's going to go. Sarge is loving the lamp, and the sheriff picks buckets to Ali Edwards. Wheel and deal. Wow. Y'all ready? Yeah, All ready. right, let's do it. Okay. One, two. And we say, I want to dance some music. Stop me going. Ain't nothing that can stop how we move. Yeah. Stop me going. Ain't nothing that can stop how we move. Gotta snatch it back from that nobody. Art helps to just crack open a space allowing them to be who they are. Art ignites fire in one's soul. Access Sacramento is your local media training center, and a place called Sacramento Film Festival is their biggest event of the year. What you're seeing tonight is a compilation of very dedicated filmmakers, all done by local talent. They get great support from Access because they learn how to write a script, they learn how to do their makeup, they learn how to film with a camera. The best part about it is, is they're putting it out there for all of you guys to see and to enjoy. We're your local nonprofit community media center. We are Access Sacramento, and you are too.
Great. That's yep. wonderful. Very good. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. You know, one of the things that I, looking at um, some of the uh, some of the events and things that were covered is I recognize that there were a number of events, a number of things that likely wouldn't have been um, visible had it not been for Access Sacramento. Um, and so I want to want to thank you for that and for showcasing those and bringing those to light so that so that people can see the incredible diversity that we have here in the Sacramento area and the the great events and and dances and and different things that go on. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, Chair Spieth, just yes. one more thing on this item before <laughs> okay. you go to the next item. Um, uh, uh, Jessica Rhodes from the Sacramento Education Cable Consortium can't, couldn't be here today. She's actually in a plane somewhere. But she um, did hand out posters to um, all, all your board members announcing the uh, SEVA Awards for 2025. And I, I, I believe um, uh, the people who are going to be competing for the award have till February to um, apply for this. And of course, uh, coming up in next April will be the annual SEVA Awards, which is quite a great event to, that uh, uh, that shows the uh, what the uh, the children in um, L, well uh, K through. 20-year-old, <laughs> uh, youth in our uh, community are doing, uh, making use of the commission money, working in SEVA labs, um, and working with the uh, SECC in uh, creating the, w the wonderful um, uh, videos that are uh, going to be the subject of those SEVA awards. So, Awesome. So that, we think, is April 27th. So if you could tentatively please put that on your schedule because last year was the first year that I had the opportunity uh, to attend. And I'll tell you what, uh, Director Chalm Churlitz going to be his last meeting today with us. Um, but I'll tell you what, um, seeing the joy, right, that, that you had and the, 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 the kids just yeah. emanating um, their appreciation of you and your energy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, folks, if you have not been, I highly suggest that you do. And, you know, maybe if, if it doesn't achieve a quorum, maybe we can go have dinner beforehand or something. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll tell you what, please, April 27th, uh, put that on your calendar because you don't want to miss it. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Um, sorry, the contest is Oh, I'm sorry. You were up there. By the age group? Because you have 4K through 20, yeah. like so, is it like multiple? There's multiple. I, yes, there's multiple le levels. Um, I am not sure if it's every age group or if they're categorized, but there are definitely awards for different age groups. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Today I learned it's K through 20. I didn't know that. I always know it's K through 12. So thank you for that too. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. no, it's Did by have... age group. Oh, yeah. It's by age group. Right. Okay. I think we're done on this item. Nobody else out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's no action item required, or no action required on this one. Uh, the next one is to receive uh, and file reports of state franchisees. Did we have any? Or? And there are no reports no. from our state franchisees. Okay, fantastic. So then with that, we will turn it over to our executive, well, our near past <laughs> executive director. Yeah, just a few more hours, I think, right? <laughs> Anyway, um, I have um, hopefully a short uh, uh, update for you on several commission items, so I'll just go uh, through them one at a time. Uh, first is operations and personnel, but I think we've covered that. <laughs> we've been announcing the new executive director, so um, again, I do welcome Sean. I think he's going to be a great fit for this commission moving forward. Um, I often talk about franchise and peg fee trends at this time. Um, we haven't gotten the new, uh, the, you know, we get quarterly payments of franchise and peg fees, and the new ones, are they should be coming in any day, but they haven't come in yet, so can't talk about it them at this meeting. We're in the same place we were at the, from the last meeting, but we'll continue to have this as an item on uh, future agendas and keep you up to date, and for sure there will be um, fresh data at the next meeting. I uh, want to announce that the uh, calendar 2024 surplus property list is available on our website. 
Uh, one thing, um, I'm sure many of your board members re recall that uh, we have a donation policy. So even before we surplus, um, we have a list we should put on our website and um, the, our staff, uh, Kristen Riggs um, and her staff does a great job uh, in working with the channel licensees um, and other entities who may be interested in using our surplus item. And so we, with the donation policy, we uh, basically give them time to let, uh, to let us know if um, anybody wants to use any of our equipment before we go ahead and surplus that. So that is available on our website right now. The um, next item is community grant program. And as your board is well aware, we just kicked off the community grant program. And I'm happy to say it's looking pretty successful so far. You know, I think one of the questions was, are people going to know about this? And are people going to apply? And um, so far, we've gotten um, three applications for the community grant program. And we know of at least one more that we're going to get. So we're going to have at least four. And um, the uh, November 1st is the last day to uh, apply. So we may get more than the four there. We also have one scholarship application, and I don't know if we'll get any more, but hopefully we will get more before November 1st. And I also want to remind your board that uh, there's two tranches of this every year, so if anybody misses the boat on this or they couldn't quite get their application in, um, we will, um, again in February, they can uh, apply for uh, grants as well. So um, anyway, with that, um, that's the update on the community grant program. Um, then just a few other items. Um, Metro Cable's uh, YouTube channel has reached 6,000. I mean, oh gosh, Kristen's going to kill me because it's 600 subscribers, not 6,000. But we are hopefully, hopefully that we're on a, well on our way to 1,000, <laughs> right? Right, we'll get there someday, 6,000. <laughs> Um, and um, also, too, um, uh, with our new executive director that uh, has just been hired, there will be a meet and greet uh, after this meeting for board members, staff, or any member of the public who wants to come by and meet Sean or eat free food or both. So with that, we'll be uh, meeting in the hearing room right outside the board chambers. So let's see, just a few other things. Um, I, uh, the... Um, as your board may re recall, we um, upped the number of meetings that we do a year to five, which means that there will be a there sh uh, should be a January and a March meeting. And um, I was talking to uh, Jillian Myers uh, before, the, just to make sure. One of the complications with the um, January meeting, one is that the normal meeting day, January 2nd, can't happen because nobody is going to be either around or at least <laughs> have the ability to be at a meeting that day, given it's after January 1st. But um, w with that, um, th we've scheduled uh, or reserved this chamber's January 9th at the normal Thursday time for, for that January meeting. Um, one thing I also want to point out about the January meeting, it's a little bit tricky because, um, you know, the agenda week is pretty tough getting, getting a, um, a meeting together, and nobody wants to be doing agenda week on Christmas or New Year's Day or during that holiday. So the, the plan is, is one, to have it to be a somewhat light agenda, but, um, but also to um, have um, January, I mean, December 15th be the agenda week going up to that uh, January 9th meeting. I, uh, so I, I, I talked to Jillian about this. I want to make sure that we weren't putting staff in the position of giving them something that we couldn't deliver and or th that they're going to have to do over their Christmas holiday. So we will do our best to make sure that we um, uh, have a meeting on the 9th, but uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's going to include any item that was ready by the 15th. Um, there are a bunch. There are several audits that could end up on that agenda, but if those audits aren't ready, we're not going to be asking staff to work on them over Christmas, and th th they will um, go to the next meeting. So, so with that meeting on January 9th, and um, I believe um, the March meeting is still the first Thursday in March. Is that the case? We have to register. We have, we have to have get the flexibility for it not to be, but um, okay. We don't. We'll. So the March meeting we still need to schedule. At this point in time, it's likely to be the first Thursday in March at 2.30 at the normal time. Um, we have to schedule the room and such. And if there's any issue with that, then we will reschedule it to the next most appropriate time after that. 
So um, with that, uh, I think I'm done my, uh, my items. I, I do want to say, um, I know um, uh, uh, YK Chalam Charla, it's his last meeting, and um, I've worked with him uh, when he was chair. And so I just want to thank YK for his um, passion, his direction, and his help, you know, for all the time that, um, you know, I've spent working closely with YK. So just YK, I wanted to thank you for everything and wish you well in your future endeavors. Right. And I think that's all. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Davison. I think I'd need to ask for public comments. There are no public comments. No public comments. All right. So I know we're going to have uh, a number of uh, folks who will want to speak here. Uh, so first, let me go back to Director Sloan, who just backed out of it. I was just going to ask if we had any other commissioners that would not be joining us again in January. We should thank them as well. Absolutely. And so that kind of meshes with uh, my question relative to January 9th. Um, are there... F I'm trying to make sure that we have... A uh, not a consensus, a quorum. If, if is there anyone, and I hate this is a really awkward way to ask the question, but is there anyone who knows they will not be here on January 9th, which will probably include Mr. Papineau? So, one, two, uh, Director Tom Chirla, you won't be joining us. In, so, that's three, four, five. So are we, we're going to be in a, a quorum problem, right? I, I'll make sure this seat is filled. But the, okay, right. Okay, so they'll, the seats will be filled. And I apologize. I, guess, um, I think you'll have alternates just, for all those who are not attending, so it's not a problem with the quorum. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. What I, what I didn't want to do was to make staff have to run fast to get something done when we, weren't, when we may have a questionable January 9th. So... Uh, well, well, we'll play it a little bit more by ear. Perhaps we can ask after December. I think most people would, or most would get installed the tenth. Tenth. December tenth. Yeah. 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 December tenth. Okay. So, I'm just trying to be. I'm trying to be mindful of your time and not have yeah. to rush. And I think staff can reach out to the member right. agencies to also remind them that we do have a January 9th meeting, so it'll be important to. Um, you, you know, to have representation. Also, um, you know, there may be some cases where the seats aren't filled or, or certain uh, weren't named. Uh, uh, we'll work with the clerk staff to make sure that we have a quorum. And if it's looking like we won't have a quorum, we can cancel or um, delay the meeting, like uh, you know, a few weeks if if, if we can. So we will. It you know, Jan January ninth. Uh, you know, we, we, maybe going forward, we, we might want to relook at that. The, the logistics of having the meet on January 9th. But at this point, as long as we can get a quorum, I think it's doable. But um, th those were all good points that uh, people have brought up. And um, I, I think a little communication can maybe help ensure that we have the quorum. Okay, perfect. It sounds good. Okay. So and then Chair going, Spies, uh, I'm sorry. Chair Spees here. Whoa, the hello. So that was for Hackett Little, Papineau, Martian, and you mentioned two, or you pointed to two others, but I want to capture them for the record. Who won't Those be here in January? No, they will not be here July 9th, if you could, or excuse me, January 9th, if you could identify yourself again. Martian, yep. yes. Do we have? Papineau, Hackett Little, and Descala, and that's, okay, perfect, thank you. Okay. All right, so. Uh, other questions, comments? Cause I have I have a few. So, oh man, I'm not going to make my four o'clock meeting or my four o'clock deadline, but it's okay. <laughs> but did, did anyone have any comments or anything? Because I have a few things to say. YK, did you have? Any, you want to? You want me to go? You want to go after this? Because I'm sure you're going to want to say something. Yeah, I'm good to say it then. Okay, at the end. All right. So let me first go with um, a question that I thought about um, relative to Director Brown's question about helping with the corrections. Is is it is corrections? Is that group? Um, would it be legal for them to apply for a community grant? Hmm. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then perhaps they should be encouraged to do so, and that might be an easy solution. Um, next, um, I want to. Um, Thank Mr. Davison. Um, well, we have, uh, we have appointed a new executive director. I know you're not going anywhere yet. You're still hanging around. 
um, to help us and through the transition. Um, but as as we should all know, this is our last meeting of the year. Um, this is our, our holiday meeting slash end of year. Um, I want to thank you very much for, for coming back, helping us out through the transition. I know you're not going anywhere yet, but this is a very appropriate time to say thank you, and I appreciate what you've done to help us out. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Um, next, I want to... Uh, there's there's more than just uh, Director Chalamchurla and uh, Director Papineau, and so for those of you who will not be returning um, next uh, next year, uh, I want to thank you for the service that you've provided. I want to thank you for having a uh, for having a group of people that can work well together, that can be respectful to each other. Um, it's very refreshing. Um, sometimes we don't have to look too far uh, to see organizations that don't work well together, and I certainly appreciate all of you for doing that. Um, and, you know, YK, man, I'll tell you, I'm going to miss you, buddy. I know you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Um, but the joy that you bring to, to this commission and in, in what you in, in what you do, um, I'm, I'm going to miss that energy. So thanks, buddy. And um, the last part of it is, you know, I want to I want to thank staff again very very much. Again, this has been a a bit of uh, turbulence over the last year or so. Um, your your professionalism has is outstanding. Your dedication to the mission is admirable. I thank you very very much for that. Um, and with that, for me, happy holidays to everyone. I know this is just October, but this is it for us. Um, I, I should have worn a, a Santa hat or something like that, but um, uh, I just want to say uh, happy holidays to everyone. So, okay, Director Chalam Churla, I knew you were going to have something, buddy. Okay. I have a, a four pages long for my <laughs> four year service. Um, uh, it's again, uh, Chair, thank you so much for your kind words. You know, I, I, I enjoyed, I, it, they were, when I got into the city council in 2020, they were, my mayor was allocating, I said, I, I like that cable commission, I chose this. And uh, when I came here, you know, all those wonderful people, you know, thank you again, you, you welcome me so well, and uh, you know, I sincerely, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I'm saying I really enjoyed these four years here with all of you, and my colleagues as well. Uh, as Director Spisa said, you know, I come with that enthusiasm. I want to go. I want to do something. You know, sometimes I say what I want to say more clear, and I think my Adha committee knows, you know, if uh, I have to say about a candidate we are interviewing, I'll say it. You know, no, no, no reservations there. At the end, we want the best for this commission. Right? So that's what it is. And I, I'm lucky enough to serve in my last four years as a chair as well. And, uh, you know, my, my goal is to have this cable, Metro Cable, one-stop shop. I know we have some logistical issues, like the bandwidth, but whatever we can do. And th thank you for giving me the uh, uh, farewell gift, bringing the uh, Folsom Cordova Unified School Districts. We were talking about it. I said, I'm going to go and talk. I spoke to those board members. Whatever happened, they're in, right? That's what we want to know, because we don't want the public go here for this, go here for that, go here, right? It's kind of thing. And also during my chair role, I know I, I put some think outside the box concept to the uh, uh, staff. And uh, they came back with this community grants and the kids' uh, uh, high school uh, scholarships. So with the chair's request, chair, I think I'll request whether we can extend a week or two on those high school kids. Mm -hmm. I will run with it for mm -hmm. all the high schools to their, uh, their, their parents and the teachers, you know, if that's OK with you. I'm just putting a request here. I want to make sure more kids participate in these programs. We want them, you know, we want to put the red carpet from Sacramento to LA for that Golden Globe Award. That's our goal, right? That's how we want to see it. So once again, you know, staff was very accommodative. Bob, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Josh, I know you always say, uh, no, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why he's here. We want to make sure. And Jillian, I just want to repeat what I said inside the uh, door. We as an ad hoc committee, we just gave a minimum guidelines. This is our schedule to hire our executive director. 
they delivered. Mm. They delivered, right? I just want to give this one example, not only this one and many. I want to give, you know, please help me to give a, a round of applause, you know, as a yearly to all the hardworking staff members. <laughs> Jillian, Christine, and all. Thank you again. So, Chair, I'm going to miss all of you. You're not, you're not going far. I'm not going you're far. You're not going far. So. But I do want to highlight something. So, Mr. Davidson, um, the... What uh, Director Tom Trilla had worked on relative to the Folsom Cordova School District, uh, soon will, it'll be being recorded. Can you update on Because that was, that was significant work that he was trying to do and to advocate for it. And yeah. Kristen Riggs will update us on that. Sure, you just want to know the background of how we came to... No, just when will it come about? I know that oh, it's, it's happening. It, it's happening now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. It because started, I know he's been, you know, he has advocated and, and you've, you know, you've worked on it for a while. And the, I just The first meeting was October, I, I want to say the 17th, Thursday the 17th, and Kevin Benyon, the technical coordinator, worked with the IT staff over there and dialed in the cameras, learned the system is creating some manuals and, and we have crew that are going there now every two weeks, just about, so, yes. Perfect, it sounds good. That's Thank you for your, for your contribution, sir. Thank you so much, yeah. And also our peg friends here, uh, Donna. Yes, I visited your holiday party, whatever it is. I had a fun time there. And the Siva, I think uh, the minute I came to know when I came to this board, I jumped on it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to echo again and again what our chair said. Please, if you get an opportunity, no, no, you will get an opportunity. Don't yep. miss it. Yep. I think you'll have a, a standing invitation to go to that every time because oh. I think everybody's, you, you, you energize the crowd. You and the kids, you fed off each other. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank so, you. And uh, last but, uh, but not least, I know I'm making my rounds. I'm not going to leave this one. Inviting our... Uh, AT&T and Cape, Comcast, what do we call them? I'm uh, sorry. The uh, franchisees. Franchisees who are paying the bills, in fact, mm -hmm. to be honest. And uh, I, I'm so close to bring them here, but there was a leadership change. Mm -hmm. I see them outside, right? So we want them to be yeah. here. We want them to see all the great things they are doing as a peg channel and our staff is doing for their money. So hopefully we'll continue that. One day we can bring them. Once again, <laughs> friends. Thank you. I'll see you around, all of you. And thank you all. Okay. Chair, thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. All right, do we have any other comments or questions? Again, thanks to those. Uh, thank you to staff. Um, and um, thank you to, uh, to all the directors. And so with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land this plane for, the, for 2024. And uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair.